If you're not sure exactly what Airtable can do for you, you are going to love this video because I'm going to be breaking it down, literally step by step, how you can build a custom app for any workflow or any process inside of your organization. If learning how you can get more organized in Airtable, automate a lot of this stuff, and then share access with members of your team is of interest to you, then stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's my mission here to help you unlock the full potential of no-code tools and Airtable is one of those tools that is at the core of pretty much everything that we build. The end goal for you here is to be able to build your own custom app and we're going to be going step by step on how to do exactly that. But before I get into it, I first want to invite you to join me for some free training. If you're kind of new to Airtable, or if you just want a bit of a refresher on all of the key features, we've put together an Airtable crash course. You can sign up at gapconsulting.io slash Airtable dash crash dash course. You'll get immediate access to the first lesson and we deliver multiple lessons over the course of about a week so that you can get up to speed in all the key features of Airtable. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. We have got to get to the heart of the video here. We are talking about how will we build a custom app? Now, the first thing to do, of course, is we are going to be building from scratch. So you will load up in Airtable. If you're not already a user, please consider signing up with our affiliate link that I'll share with this video. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel. We appreciate it. Inside of your dashboard here, you might be looking at everything in a list view. You can see we have many, many different databases in Airtable. You might also have it in a grid view. So either way, same stuff here. We are going to be creating a new one. And in the bottom left corner, you're going to find that button. Now you're going to get a prompt and this does not matter what plan you're on, right? If you're on a free plan, if you're on the most robust enterprise plan at the other end of the spectrum, you can still use building an app with AI. I'm not going to do that here today because I find that it kind of takes away from what it means to build your own app step by step. But once you kind of get the feel for this, using AI to build your apps quickly is a great way to get up and running with much more speed. But for us, we're going to choose from scratch. And what is opening up here is the back end of Airtable. Now, I call this the back end because when you actually deploy your apps and you share them with your team, very few people are actually going to be back here. This is the guts of the thing. This is the back end database itself. And yes, it looks like a spreadsheet. It's rows and columns here. You'll notice that down here on the bottom left, we can display the information in this view in a number of different ways. But this is kind of like the old school version of Airtable and with the new evolutions of Airtable, the new features they've released over the last few years, we now have interfaces up here. We're going to get into this at a future point in the video, but the interfaces are where you're going to engage with the data. It gives you that extra layer so that you don't show everything. And again, this is going to make a lot more sense once we've actually built some stuff. So let's imagine that we're putting together a very lightweight CRM. We're going to have companies. We're going to have uh, the people that work at those companies. And then maybe we are tracking opportunities throughout that, uh, you know, sales process. So without really calling it out, what we've just done is kind of identified the data sets that we're going to be working with. And this is going to be a key step for you every time you build your own solution in Airtable. So the back end is where you're going to create those different data sets. And each one of those data sets will be its own table. And a table looks like a tab in Excel. The key difference here, though, is that a table represents a certain set of data. So our first one we mentioned was companies. I'll double click here and I'll rename this one. Next, I will add or import here and we'll do another one from scratch. And this will be people. And then lastly, we're going to track those opportunities, right? So let's go opportunities here and we will go ahead and save up. Now, Airtable starts us with a bunch of fields to kind of show us the different types of data that we can collect. I'm going to go through and delete all of these and I can select multiple by selecting one, holding down shift and then, you know, basically wrapping a bunch of fields here together so that we can start from scratch. You'll note that I have not eliminated the primary field. The leftmost field in every table is the primary field. And this is going to be the name of the record that we see as we share it throughout. 
So let's really quickly just throw in some sample data. Let's say we've got three different companies, Acme, Beta, and uh, Delta. All right. So these are the different organizations that we work with. And you can imagine then what information will we collect about the companies. Everything that we build in this company's table is supposed to pertain directly to the company. So we might have things like the website of the company. And you'll notice that when, after I've named a particular field, then I come down here and I choose the type of data that's gonna live here. So I just instinctively put in URL because I've done this a hundred times. You will get faster with this as you build, but we are storing a URL here. So we're choosing that data type when we create the field. We might also have like the corporate phone number, for example. And of course, as you would guess, we do have the ability to have a phone number here as well. So each one of these will be pertaining to the record for Acme or for Beta or for Delta. We can also open up the record just like this, and we're gonna see all the different data points that pertain to that particular row or record. Now, the next step is gonna be connecting our data. So we've got some people over here. Let's just go with a few, I'll say uh, people one or person one and person two, let's assume that both of them actually work for the same company. So how do we work with this? Well, we connect the people to the company. And again, this is all done in the back end. So we build a linked relationship here and we'll say company, and we will build a link to another data set in the same place, in the same solution that we're working on, right? And Normally, a person is only going to be working with one organization, so we will toggle off multiple records. If we kept this toggled on, that would mean that a person could be connected to multiple companies at once, and we don't want that behavior. But on the company side of things now, we're gonna see that we have the reciprocal of that link. If we link one thing to another, then it has to go two directions. That link is bidirectional. So here companies are linked to people, and on this side of things, we do want multiple people to be able to link to a company. Now it doesn't matter where we add this. If we add the person at the company side or if we add the company from the people side, doesn't make a difference. So I will add a person here. I'll say, all right, person one works for Acme. And when we flip back into people, you're gonna see that person one is now linked up to Acme. And I can do the same thing for person two from the other direction here. And when we go over to companies, we're gonna see that two people are working for Acme. So pretty cool stuff so far. Now it's time for us to add the next layer and that's the opportunity. So let's say I've got uh, e-commerce uh, business offer, right? So we'll just call it e-commerce e service and I will link now to a person. So who is the person that uh, we are engaged with this opportunity with? Here's my link to people. It could be one, maybe it's multiple. I'll imagine for our scenario, it's just one person per opportunity and I'll link up to person one. Now we can reach through a layer of data because we know where person one works. So we can actually access their company as well, but we're not gonna do it with a link here. We could, but instead I'm going to use a lookup field because person one's already connected to a company, we can look through that relationship and say, hey, we know that we're looking at the people here. We wanna bring in the company. Let's create the field. And just like that, we can look up and see who person one is working for. Now we can track this opportunity through various stage. Uh, so I might create a status field or a single select field type, and let's just give it a few phases. I'll say phase one, phase two, and lastly, phase three. And so we can work through a deal basically. And now for the fun stuff, right? We want to be able to share access to the data with our team, but we wanna be able to lock down what they can do. So this is where interfaces come in. Now that we've got kind of the structure built of the thing in the back end, we can head over to interfaces. And you'll notice that this is just a drag and drop interface here, a little UX that we can then share with our team. So let's start building. I'll build an interface from scratch. We can give it a name if we want. I'll keep it this and I'll bring in the coffee icon and let's go next. So here is where I get to choose how am I displaying this data? And let's suppose we wanna look at a Kanban view. This is gonna allow us to stack opportunities and we can kind of see where they are through the various stages. So we're gonna work with this, I'll go next. And I want to first tell it, what table am I looking at here? And for us, I'm looking at opportunities, right? 
And just like that, it's mapped this out. We had three records, only one of them did I fill out, the e-commerce service, and we can start uh, you know, stacking the different opportunities by phase. So let's finish this up and take a look at what this means for us. We can choose on our interface, do we want to allow people to click into the record and see more information here? Also, do we want to allow people to edit that data? So let's suppose, for example, we do want to allow people to click into an opportunity. Now we can add comments down here, we can chat, collaborate with our team, and we can decide, well, maybe we don't want to bring the company in here, or we don't want to bring the people in, or maybe we need more information. I need the company's website, for example, to be accessible here. There are many different things that we can do. Once we have the data properly structured and connected, as you see, we can build that front end as we would like. Now you'll notice over here that we have a lot of granular permissions on the right hand side of my screen, I'm determining right now, is something view only or is it editable? And exactly what fields are we bringing in here? So right now we've brought all the data in, but I can lock certain things down and hide it. This is really, really important. And in fact, I'm gonna pause here and tell you, I've worked with many enterprise companies who have been using Airtable for years and they have yet to lean into the interfaces. And here's why that is such a problem. Because when you share access with your team to the backend database, it becomes very hard to control what people have access to. If you do it in interfaces, by contrast, you have a lot of control over what they see, what they edit, and ultimately, if they can break your system. Because when you have too many chefs in the kitchen, things tend to go wrong, right? So generally what we see here, one or two people are working in the admin type of role where they have access to the back end. Everybody else should be accessing this data through interfaces. So that brings up the question, how do we share it? Well, of course we have to publish our interface, yes. And once we have done this, it's going to immediately ask us, do you wanna share this? And so you'll notice that we can choose if people will be able to edit data here and they can only edit the data that we've allowed them to edit in the interface. Also, we can choose to make them just commenters and then lastly, read only. Do note that when you share access with your Airtable interface, with others, then that means that they will be users on your account. And if you're on a paid account, you will be billed accordingly for each user you have. So be very aware of this because you can run up a big bill pretty quickly. Now, what I've built here can be done in a free version, but if you are upgrading because you need some more advanced features from Airtable, be aware that the more people you share interfaces with, the higher your bill is gonna go. You can invite them by email here. You can also create a link and just share a link with people, all possible here. Now the last component of Airtable that I did not share with you yet goes back to in the database component, the automations. And this is a very valuable place as well because we can automate a lot of our work. There are many, many opportunities here for sending accounting information out to QuickBooks or billing clients through Stripe or sending automated email messages or text messages. You'll notice that even Slack is uh, available here. So there's uh, just so many different opportunities for automating those repetitive mundane tasks. Now, this is going to save you a ton of time when you lean into it. And even a small automation that only saves you five minutes a day will really add up over time. Five minutes on top of five minutes on top of five minutes will have a profound impact at the end of the day. So leveraging the automations is a very valuable thing, but of course it's all for naught if you don't have the proper database structure on the back end and then that interface on the front end where people interact with the data. So those are the core features of Airtable. I hope you got a ton of value from this video and feel a little bit more comfortable stepping into building your next app. But if you have any questions that we did not cover here, swing by our website. We have a team that is standing by to help you if you need some one-on-one -on -one or many other free resources that we make available on our website as well. Of course, if you did get value from this, we would love it if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, Keep on building.